Good afternoon, radio audience. Again, we want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio audience, at any point in time during this broadcast, you have the opportunity afforded to you to pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions, and we would love to listen to your comments as well. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Verse number 6 through verse number 11. And at this time, we're going to have our brother Javier Frias, uh, who will come to the microphone. And brother Javier is going to lay a foundation uh, for this part 3 study. And we've been talking about this subject the past uh, two weeks. And as brother Henry mentioned in verse number 7 of 1 Timothy 6, we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And it is a tool. Money is just a tool. But how you use it and how they used it in the Bible are examples of us today on how we should use it and how we should not use it. In verse number 17 of 1 Timothy 6, it says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. So in verse 17 and verse number 18, he tells Timothy to tell the saints the good thing and the bad thing that can come from money. He says, don't be high-minded just because you have it. It says, be ready to distribute, willing to communicate, ready to, willing to give for those who have need. You know, in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, uh, chapter number 62 going to the Old Testament. But there's a lot of subjects and a lot of men and women that dealt with this subject and they erred. We know and we read about Luke 16, the rich man that died. The Bible says he woke up in hell. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. So if they do increase, the Bible gives instructions, don't set your heart upon them. When the heart is set on riches, that's all that it thinks about. It moves God and everything godly out of its way to make itself set and commissioned to just serve it instead of it being a tool that you use. It says, don't set your heart upon it. When you look at Jeremiah chapter 9, looking at verse 23, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, uh, saith the Lord. So these instructions are given. If you have wisdom, it says, don't glory it in it as if it came from you. It says, let not thy rich man glory in his riches. All things come, all things come from God. The Bible talks about also that God made the poor and also the rich. So everything that you have that you receive, whether you lack it or you do have it, it came uh, from God. Put God first. Look at another scripture in the book of 2 Kings. Again, 2 Kings uh, chapter number 5, going to the Old Testament. We're going to talk about two gentlemen, one named Elisha. Another one named uh, Gehazi, 2 Kings 5, verse number 25. He went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? He said, Thy servant went nowhere. Now he just lied. He just lied to Elisha. Verse 26, And he said unto him, Wit not my heart with thee. When the man turned again from his chair to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards? Vineyards, sheep, oxen, manservants, and maidservants. He's going through a list of things. Verse 27, The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper, as white as, as snow. Now, Elisha already told him we're not going to receive those things. He already mentioned to him, is it a time? Is it the time right now to do this? What did Gehazi do for these garments before the presence of a prophet, Elisha? He lied unto him. He said, I, I didn't go anywhere. That sermon went nowhere is what he said. So the leprosy that Naaman had actually came upon Gehazi. And he lied to get these garments, to get these, these treasures that came uh, from the Syrian, from Naaman. 
So when it comes to money, many of you will lie for it. You will cheat for it. You will do a multitude of things for it. But remember, if it goes contrary to what God has said to get it, God is writing that down in the book of Remembrance concerning that iniquity. Look at another scripture concerning Delilah, Judges, uh, chapter number chapter number 16. We're going to look at the strongest man that ever existed, which was Samson. And we know the wisest man was also taken down by women as well, Solomon. He had the treasures and the money to build all those false temples for Astrith and for those other gods that they wanted. In Judges chapter number 16, looking at verse 5, the lords of the Philistines came unto her, this is Delilah, said unto her, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. In this chapter we read that she consistently asks where his strength is, and consistently Samson, he did not tell her, he lied unto her, and gave her an answer that was not the answer of where his strength was, which was his hair. At the end, he gave in because he got tired of her consistency. And he told her, my hair, if someone cuts it off, if I were to cut it off, my strength will be as any other man. And what happened? The motivating factor was the silver, 1,100 pieces, each one of us. Amen. That's why she consisted. And then his motivating factor was the love. He didn't want to lose the love. For Delilah. Amen. What was Solomon's motivating factor? He loved the women. The foreign women that brought the ideas of the foreign gods. So he used his money to build these false temples, false gods for his wives, his concubines. So here it mentions that for 1,100 pieces of silver, she consisted with this. They brought the money in her hand, verse 18, when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent a call for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up. This once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in her hand. As she made him sleep upon her knees, she called for a man. She caused him to shave all off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. He woke up out of his sleep, said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he was not that the Lord was departed from him. What did they do? They shaved his hair. They took his eyeballs out of his eye sockets. And the motivating factor was the money that was promised unto uh, Delilah. A lot of people are doing this. They're selling drugs across the Mexico border. They're selling their, their children uh, for money. They're doing different extortion all over the world uh, for this one thing. The last chapter we'll toss it. Luke chapter number 12. Luke chapter number 12. Looking at verse 13. This is uh, Jesus dealing with uh, these two men at first, two brothers. Luke chapter 12, looking at verse 13, it says, And one of the company said unto his master, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. He said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? He said unto him, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable Unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He said, This will I do. I will put down my barns, build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And there's a multitude of people that are going to die today, a week from now, a month from now. They have a multitude of money just stacked up all the way to the top in the bank. And they're going to die and leave it. Never see that money again. They're going to meet the judge. And if they're not ready, as Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where am you cannot come? There was men like Kevin Samuels who speaks to women, gives advice. But what was the hypocrisy where he died in the arms of a woman, fornicating? And if he died in his sins, as Jesus said, where am you cannot come? Take heed, audience. Don't let this world, men, people, and especially money, 
The root of all, the love of money is the root of all evil. Don't let it guide you to a devil's hell. The number to call is 12, 1 through 7, 22, 22. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so a wonderful explanation Amen. of uh, Old Testament uh, scriptures and uh, even bringing up uh, Jesus' uh, thought process about the love of money. Now, we're talking about the love of money. We're talking about a condition of the heart uh, that feels more security, more pleasure, more hope uh, in earthly possession than it does in being faithful and having a relationship with God. So that's what we're talking about, the love of money. Amen. Now, I'm going to say this. Jesus spoke on this, uh, this idea in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6 and 24. And I want you to go there, and I'm going to read this. And I don't want to just read it. I want you to read it and believe what Jesus said, because many of you don't believe what Jesus said. And it is proven by how you live your life. He says, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. Now listen what Jesus says. You cannot, I'm going to say it again, you cannot serve God and Mammon. You know what he's saying? You can't serve God and the world. You can't serve God and money because at the end of the day, when it boils down to it, you're going to be proven which one is your God at the end of the day. When the rubber meets the road, it will show in your actions, in your speech, in your lifestyle, which one you love the most. You know, let me tell you, money, the love of money, it robs God of what he's due from you and I from our life. Make sure you get that. You're not producing the fruit, uh, the actions, the attitude. Uh, that belongs to God because your allegiance is to money. Jesus tells a parable in Matthew 13, a parable of the seed and the sower. And I want you to listen here what he says here, beginning at verse 18. He says, Matthew 13, 18, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one, catching away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Now look at verse 20. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same as he that hear the word, and Anan with joy receive it, yet had he not root in himself, but he dure it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word by and by, this guy is offended. So this is the guy that's offended uh, by the truth, the one that fell in the stony places. Truth comes, says you gotta, you know, you gotta leave the Baptist church. Grandma, you know, she died lost, you know, because she didn't obey the gospel. That offends many people. They leave the church. You can't have instruments of music uh, in the worship of God. Some of you are offended by that. You leave the church. You can't call your preacher reverend. There is no first lady, and so that offends you. And so because it offends you, the truth offends you, you leave the church, okay? And so you are the seed that fell in stony places. Now look at the one that fell in the thorns. Now here's what we're talking about. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. You see that? He becomes unfruitful. What does that mean? Well, he robs God of what God is due because you love money. You don't come to worship because the boss said he's giving away overtime. Oh, yeah, I'm going to raise my hand. I'm not going to worship this Sunday uh, because I need M-O-N-E, money, 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 money. It becomes your God. You trust in it. It becomes your security. And so love of money, you cannot serve both God and mammon. It robs God of what he is due. And let me tell you what else it does. If you love money, you're the individual that neglects the needy. Do you know that's one of the reasons the rich man ends up in hell? I want you to look at Luke 16. See, because he loved money. At the end of the day, this guy loved money. It neglects the needy because you love it so much, you'll step over anybody that you can in order to have more of it. You'll tear down anybody you can just so you can get more of it. I'm not going to read all this. You can read your own leisure. I'm going to just show you some of the things this guy did. In verse 22, it came to pass that the, as a matter of fact, let's start verse 19, Luke 16, 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, fine linen. He fared sumptuously every day. 
And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores. Now look at this. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, more of the dogs came and licked his sores. You know what this shows? This guy did nothing. As rich as he was, did nothing. Had a place to stay, food to eat, cared nothing about Lazarus. Why? Because he loved money. Now we have a call on the line, 281-837-2222. I'm going to interrupt this to talk to take the call, this question or comment. Go ahead, call you on the air. Okay, let me let me add, let's do what you're, we will read Romans 2, 1. Now, let me ask you, you said we need to stop condemning folk. Now, how, okay, what does that mean, sir? Sir, what does that mean to you? No, no, no. No, we're, we're going to read Romans 2, 1, but I want to, I want to ask you a question, sir. How are we condemning folk by telling them the truth? How do you do that, sir? How do you, how do you do that? Oh, so no, you, no. I want I want to answer. No, we're going to answer. I want you to answer our question. How do you address that? See, he hung up. This is that guy that called in last week, and I don't know if he said we're condemning we're condemning folk. Let me tell you something. When you don't stand in the truth, or you don't come to the light, you're condemning yourself. See, this is what Jesus. said. I want you to go to John three. This is what Jesus said. We're not condemning anybody. Anybody who don't obey the truth and believe that God's word is true, you're already condemned. And that's why Jesus came, to fix condemned lies. But he can only fix it if you're willing to admit that you're evil, that you got evil deeds. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, sir, I'm going to say this before I read on uh, verse 18 and following. I want to know, first of all, who did we condemn? Are you the one with the love of money? Maybe you're the one that do love money. Maybe you're the one that, that, that loves money so much and money is your God. And tell me, that's why you have a problem, sir. And all we're telling you, like we'll tell anybody else who loves money, is you need to repent. As if, if it was us, we would need to repent and get it right with God so that when we leave here, we can make heaven our home. That's what we're doing on this radio program. We never got on here and said, we have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. You haven't heard that out of none of these brothers' mouths the past 15 years that we've been on the air that we have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. All we're doing is telling people what they need to do or not to do in order to keep themselves out of hell. And so Jesus says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, Amen. because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than lights. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that do it evil, they hate the light. Sir, do you hate us? Do you hate Jesus? For telling you the truth. Are we your enemy, Galatians 4, 16, because we tell you the truth? We never got on here on this air one, one time and said we have never sinned, that we didn't need Jesus, that Jesus sits in our lap. But we are telling you that if you don't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, get baptized in water for the mystery of sin, be added by the Lord to the church, Acts 2, 47, the one church you read in the Bible, then you are going to die and go to heaven. We're not going to repent for that. I don't care. You can call in here. A hundred times. I'm going to tell you the same thing on that one. We're not going to apologize, sir, for telling the truth to you or nobody else because we don't serve you. We don't serve the community. We serve God. That's what we serve. And we understand that on this radio program. So he says, neither come it to the light for his deeds should be reproved. But he that do it truth come it to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. And I said this last week and I'm going to say it again. You know... <laughs> You guys, some of you guys, like this guy that called in, you know, you guys don't say none of this information to your doctor when you go, when he tells you things that you need to change in your physical body. You, he'll tell you you need to take medicine. He'll tell you that you might have to have chemotherapy, and rightly so. And it doesn't matter how comfortable it may be to him to tell you or how uncomfortable you might feel after he tells you you need to take this medicine and this chemo. The idea is it's what you need to hear in order to get your body where it needs to be. But for some reason, guys like this guy that calls in, 
These guys, these guys don't want to hear the truth. They want us to tell them what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear when it's concerning their soul's salvation. Amen. And so you hate us for that, just like they hated Jesus for that. And so we are doing it in the spirit of meekness, sir. We are, we, you know what? We don't get on this program, have not solicited one dollar from you or anybody else. Didn't ask you to come to the church where we congregate or anything Amen. else. We hadn't asked a dime for you, so don't even know your name. You ain't even got to call in when we get on the radio. If you don't want to, you can turn it off at 3.30 to 4 p.m. But the idea is we do this out of love Amen. for God and for the souls that God has created. And so you're the one calling in making unrighteous judgment because you don't know us and we don't know you, sir. So you need to make sure you get into your Bible because none of us on this program ever said that we were Jesus. 281-837-2222. We have another call on the line. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. What does that mean, sir? Yeah, I mean, you don't don't hang up. You see, you did that last week. You you called in. You threw a rock. There, you hung up again. You threw a rock and you hid your hand. Now, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read his scripture because we're not scared to read on this program. See, Romans two one is what he wants me to read. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, you condemn yourself. For thou that judges does the same thing. Now, we spoke on this last week. This guy believes that there's something wrong with judging people. That's why, that's his problem. But yet, he again made a judgment like he did last week. He made a judgment that we are, what do you say? We're not doing what we're doing in meekness. You know, he doesn't understand the judging that Jesus is talking about. He, the Bible don't say not to judge. The Bible says make righteous judgment. Go to John chapter 7 and 24. I want him to call back in, and I want him to explain to us, and I'll buy more time for him to explain uh, to a limit uh, what, what John 7 24 is saying. And these are words of Jesus, sir. Words of Jesus. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgments. Now, these are words that Jesus says. So I need him to call in, and, and I want to hear his take on what Jesus is saying in John 7, 24, and what Paul is saying in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4. Because what he doesn't understand is when Paul wrote the book of Romans, in Romans 1, Paul is dealing with the sins of the Gentiles. See, I wonder, does he think Paul is judging when he says, I'm going to read some of this. When John, in Romans 1.18, when Paul says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in him, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Use, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither was as Paul making a judgment here, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts was darkness. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them unto up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. Is Paul making a judgment? And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. So, sir, do you have a problem with the Holy Spirit and Paul? Because he's definitely making a judgment about a lifestyle that will keep people out of heaven. So what this man needs to understand in Romans 1, Paul is dealing with the Gentiles who do not have the law of Moses. And then in chapter 2, he deals with the Jews who did have the law, who were saying, yeah, God, get on the Gentiles. Gentiles didn't have the law. Yeah, they are nasty. Yeah, men are without men. And so Paul in chapter 2 said, therefore, you are an excuse. He talks to the Jews now. Oh, man, whosoever you are that judge. For when you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you judges do the same thing, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth against them which commit such things. So, sir, I want you to call in and ask and, and, and tell me that you know that I'm a lover of money. Please call in and tell me that you know I'm a fornicator, that I'm doing the same thing, that I'm a lover of money, that I'm a fornicator, that I'm an adulterer. Call in and tell me that you know that I'm doing these things, sir. And then you, if you know that, then you'll be making righteous judgment. Sir, you need a lot of study is what you need. You need a, a lot of studying. We hope to pray that you will tune in and that you will study. We have another call on the line? Okay, go ahead, call you on there.
No, we're not agreeing. time is well spent. We appreciate Mr. Martin who's here today giving us time uh, on the airways. Uh, we hope you tune in next week. We will pick up with this discussion be God's will on next week. Uh, we want to leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16, the church of Christ salutes you. That's what I wanted you to do. That's what I told you to do. He got the wrong scriptures. Because you'd have to be a fornicator. Right. You, you'd have to be a false doctrine teacher. Right. In order to, whatever you said about Greg. Because see, this is a, if anything, this is nothing else. This is a book. Amen. So I can read in this book, Jeremiah 19, 1, thus saith the Lord. So I wish to read, thus saith Jacob. So this is the type of book we have. Right. So it reads. Right. It also reads physically. Right. So he's saying things that are physically impossible. There is no sinner's prayer. Yeah. So see, when we say that, this guy say, Lee Greg Long, he's a good man. Right. But, well, we're not hypocrites because we don't say about the sin. Now, we would teach the sinner's prayer on another challenge, then we'd be hypocrites. Right. Right. Exactly. See, so yeah, his, his comprehension is all sinner for yeah. some reason, yeah. um, even just understanding physical language. Yeah. So you can't help him. He yeah. got to at least say, so what did Jesus say? How can I tell you my spiritual thing? If you don't accept the right, exactly. you got to accept that the wind blows right. where, where it decides exactly. to go. So if he's not accepting that, the law said, now that's the law. I guess he would know what he's talking about. Yeah, he right. said, how can you possibly understand the spiritual Here's thing? Things. Nah, you know, it's time the game stops, man. Yeah, the game's got to stop. It's gotta it's, 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 it can't jump up and say stuff, man.